Hey, what's up and welcome to a very new and exciting tutorial. My name is Mr. Popo and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at something very simple and really too much requested recently on the comments and that is how to get those smooth animation that I do. So I've been thinking a lot because I was thinking of doing um, some really advanced kind of um, infographics and um, probably animation with even Cinema 4D on my next tutorial but then I thought that that's too extreme and I want you guys to um, kind of you know take you one step further from the basics and get you into what you really need to know simple stuff that you need to know and tools that you need to use and know so that you can have those smooth kind of um, transition or animation uh, using keyframes and whatnot. So um, yeah. Um, so basically, um, today we're going to be taking a look on, for example, just how to create something really simple as this, but then you can use it in your own um, way. Um, yeah. So let's get right into it. I don't want to drag this a lot longer. All right, one, two, three, of uh, cheese. All right, so it's very simple. Um, so basically we have text animation, um, we have some shape animation, we have some icons and uh, website being animated here and there. So um, quite a lot to learn actually. Um, yeah, so um, I have a lot of examples like this. Um, by the way, this was inspired from uh, Seth Eckert. Uh, I think you guys should check him out. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't want to drag this a lot. So um, let's just uh, go straight into it. I'm sorry if I'm rushing things. It's just that um, I really have a lot of deadlines going on. So I'm just trying to make this one or two hours before midnight so that I can record this tutorial and help you guys as much as possible because that's what I like to do. Um, I just need to excuse myself if recently I haven't uploaded any tutorial and um, if I'm going fast. So hopefully you guys understand, you know, um, really a lot of things and deadlines to cover. So yeah, let's go into it. So today what we're going to be covering is basically we're going to know how to use a gun and overshoot people. <laughs> You know, basically overshoot is just a script that we're going to see and how to use one more time. Um, we're going to know how to use uh, just very simple thing in text animation. I'm going to share with you some uh, shape tips. Um, I've received a lot, really a lot of messages asking me um, how to round stuff and things, but we're going to see that later. I'm going to talk about something freaking important and people really, some people really, really don't know that this thing exists and what is it. And that's not bad. I mean, there is a first time for everything. Just like you lose your virginity, that's your first time. And uh, yeah, you cry about it. Then later on, you are happy that you did. Uh, pff, not really. So, region of interest. <laughs> um, we have in and ease and wheeze. Basically, that's a kind of... Uh, script that I use a lot and you guys should be using as Einstein, uh, not Einstein, Newton or whatever the hell his name is, just beautiful people says that um, do not try to reinvent the wheel and I believe that's Newton or that's probably me in my previous life, I mean if you are Buddhist. Anyways, um, we then later on since I said um, that I'm gonna upload a tutorial on Monday and I couldn't because of time and I had to um, finish some stuff so I couldn't upload the tutorial so yeah I punished myself and uh, at the end of the tutorial I'm gonna show you something <laughs> alright so um, yeah I guess we should start alright so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm not really going to do a freaking step by step, but I'm just going to show you how things are done. Um, by the way, if you think you are bombastic and this is a very simple tutorial, 
I advise you that you stop the video or you pause it, you go take your noodles, then come back and try to do the video by your own without calling 911. And if you can do it, then that's good. Uh, do it, then if you can do it, then just come back and see if it's the right thing or maybe I'm gonna use a shortcut that you don't know or, uh, you know, many beautiful stuff. And if you don't know how to make this video, then no problem, no need to cry. You can just follow me and there is a first time for everything. As I said, you'll end up losing your virginity one day or another. So I'm gonna be the one who is gonna take care of that. <laughs> all right, so um, enough stuff. So I'm just gonna get this all done. I'm gonna call this uh, before, <laughs> as always. So I'm just gonna put this, 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 this right there. Cool, and I'm gonna start a new composition and I'm gonna say 1280, 720, but before I do that, let me just close all this. Cool. Now, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new composition and I'm gonna explain uh, everything I'm gonna do before I start designing. So I'm just gonna call this explainer of chicken rice. I have no idea, don't ask me, I just like to give a name like that. Okay, so uh, explain the chicken rice. So the first thing we said is we need to understand what is overshoot. Um, I explained this many times in my tutorials and if you go um, to a guy called Abdul Shakir, um, he actually made a link to this tutorial because it's unlisted and I don't need to put it because um, Google writes, because I was high at that moment when I recorded tutorial, so I was listening to loud music. So yeah, I got screwed by YouTube. So I took it off from my channel. So basically you can go to Abdul Shakir, go for After Effects Tutor playlist, and Overshoot is there. But yeah, today I'm just gonna cover something very fast that you need to know if you haven't watched that video yet. Um, so basically Overshoot you can download it actually from uh, the description please all right um, yeah so you can download it from the description let's go so I'm gonna create a text uh, I'm gonna call this um, Overshoot this cam shoot on your face and mouth yeah I mean that makes a lot of sense um, so cool and how I'm gonna apply this is I'm gonna go to my um, animation recent animation presets and I'm gonna apply overshoot or I can just come here and put overshoot and yeah play overshoot there cool so I'm just gonna go drag it here now by default overshoot is basically something like this um, it's actually taking time, so yeah, this is overshoot, and it really takes a lot of time. Uh, yeah, so basically, what it does is it just overshoot your text, like cam shot and stuff, but not. Um, all right, my computer is pretty slow at the moment because I'm doing some stuff. Um, at first, when you apply the overshoot, um, you're gonna have a problem, which is really fast. Uh, it's really slow, though your computer is fast, and that is due to the heavy calculation that this guy does. So as you can see, it has a lot of controllers and um, expressions. So if I press U, if I press U here, um, I think I pressed U, but somehow my keyboard doesn't work when I'm uh, recording. So yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of things going on here. All right, we have a lot of, um, sorry. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, you guys are, um, just now, I'm really, um, I'm really busy, so, um, hi, hi, um, so, I'll call you later. Um, um, so, sorry, um, hi, see you later. Um, hi, well, うん。うん。はい。じゃあ、ありがとうございました。うん。うん。はい。絶対電話しますよ。じゃあ、心配しないで。はい。うん。はい。あ、ありがとう。Sorry, guys. So, um, 
what I was saying, yes, so it has a lot of expressions on blah, blah, blah. So don't worry about that. Let's see how we fix this. So the your computer is going to be slow and your preview is going to be really slow. And that is due because um, your um, text is, you know, 3D and um, you just have to disable this and then your text is going to be flying perfectly. So that's quite cool. So basically, Overshoot is just a script that um, animates your text in the beginning and then it closes it when your layer ends. So basically, if I end my layer at two seconds, so uh, yeah, it's going to appear and then it's going to disappear automatically. So as you can see, it depends on where is the beginning and where is the end. So if I, as you can see, all right, cool. Um, yeah, so these are things that you can do with this. Um, well, the overshoot is actually made of three animators, okay? So you have one intro, uh, I mean, that detects the beginning, and this one detects the end, and the last one actually plays with color. So um, as you can see here, you have random colors checked in. Now, you don't see any random color because by default, my text now is white but if I check this to for example red wow check this out I mean I'll, I'll, I'll this is better than porn I mean I can look at this for hours and okay this is wrong cool so um, yeah so if I check this off you know my text is gonna be unified color and if I check this on yes beautiful all right so um, normally I don't really use this I'm gonna not gonna use it so if I'm not using it why should I calculate more I take it off and I even take it off from here all right cool now the second thing is it helps me detect where is the end so if I took it off yeah so I just have the beginning so which is quite fast um, if you want your text to come randomly so you just check this on and then you know some letters will come before you know not in order it just comes randomly like yay uh, so again yay but if you don't check random times like yay all right so it's cool so you see the difference one is yay all right and the other one is yay all right, cool. Um, this is silly. Um, seriously, at my age doing this, this is silly. Um, <laughs> cool, so this is basically overshoot. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Now, let's get serious. I mean, I'm serious already, seriously. So, I'm serious as serious Sam himself in the seriousness. Okay, um, this is English, by the way. If you don't get it, well, too bad. All right, so I'm just gonna center this guy. So transform, uh, centering view, cool. Now, um, uh, basically, I'm actually using Proxima Nova. So if you like the font, um, yeah, just go get it, Proxima Nova. Um, it's uh, included in the Adobe CC, so you can just go to the font and get it. So I'm um, serious as uh, serious Sam himself. So um, text animation, how it goes is um, basically if I go and try to scale this whole thing, you know, um, using transform scale. Now this applies to the whole layer. It doesn't matter and it doesn't care about what the content of the thing. Hey, hey, get up, get up, get up, get up. Sorry. So it doesn't care about the whole layer, um, I mean uh, about the content of the layer, but just the whole layer as a whole. So this is not really helping if I want to get one layer by one layer, so it's really bad. And even if I rotate, so it rotates the whole layer, so that's a problem. Now if you want to animate one text, I mean one letter, one character by one character, um, you see, when you open your text, you have a small thing here called animate. So you just choose whatever you want to animate. For example, we said, I want to animate the scale, meaning I want each letter to um, scale up, you know, from, from I until S. I mean, this S, not this S, this S. I mean, I'm racist, so I'm sacist, so I don't like this S. I like this S, so from, yeah, whatever, you get it. So, um, scale. 
um, nothing happens and that is because my scale is 100% so nothing so if I put this back to 0 and I increase this to 100 so you can see that each letter is being uh, scaled all right so it's like he has typo craziness all right so I'm gonna call this right tutorial end I'm gonna call this abstract art yeah <laughs> abstract art Are you serious cool so um yeah I'm just gonna get back this to this so this is a problem like if I go and try to animate which most of the people they actually make this problem um, if I say like zero like <laughs> I'm gonna just put zero I'm just gonna put one I'm just like yeah 100 percent uh, 100 percent cool and then try to animate you know it's not really good I mean the whole letters come all together in one time and that's not something that I want well this is now how you do it so what I'm going to do is um, we need to play with something called range selector now range selector is this thing right here alright can you see this guy that's range selector uh, what does this guy do basically he goes and bang each letter now check this out if I go and play with uh, the offset check this out can you see him can you see him he goes and knock on the door of each and every letter but you know no changes did you get it so that's offset that's the range selector so basically um, yeah he goes to one letter by one letter and try to modify whatever I changed here so remember the first default value was 100 meaning that's the end this is the end result now if I want to change something let's just say 0 and I try to play with this can you see so whatever the range selector goes to it starts it from 0 and so it scales it from 0 and goes back to the default value which was 100% so that's what it does so it just does 0 to 100% to each and every single guy here all right hopefully you get it so basically you don't you don't um, you don't animate this but you animate the offset for example I'm just gonna put 0% and after two seconds I'm gonna say 100% so when I play hold on yeah cool I mean this is beautiful seriously this is beautiful you're gonna see why cool so this is what I have so the range selector offset goes to one letter to another letter now for example if I come here and change to 50% guess what alright so each letter is 50% because that's the start and then it needs to go to the default value which is 100 so from 50 to 100 so each letter will start from 50 and then goes to 100 now if I start this from um, 80 no each letter will start from this one and go back to the default value which was 100 that's it cool um, yeah that's how it goes so basically here I can say 0 and yeah now the same thing for example I don't want to play with scale I don't want to play with scale alright uh, maybe I want to play with scale but then I want my text to be rotating while it's being scaled up so I'm just gonna go to this animator since it was animated animator add property rotation now if I put this back to um, let's just say 25 so what's gonna happen now uh, let's just say 90 I think that's gonna make a lot of sense now can you check this out so each letter will be scaled from 90 back to the default value which was 0 so yeah that's how it works so this range selector will check each value from its degree from 90 to 0 and from 0 to 100 so that's what it's gonna do to each and every letter cool now I'm going fast because as I told you I have things to, to, to do right after this I've got deadlines to finish so I'm really sorry about that but don't worry there is a lot a lot of tutorials coming like this um, that I'm that I need to redo these things again and again so hopefully you get it or just keep rewatching the tutorial until you get it or you can go to this guy um, ECA Brams yeah 
all right he has some really cool tutorials and you guys should check him out I mean the guy is cool I mean he's cool like I will totally bang this guy I mean I'll, I'll do him like hard like hard I'm not gay I mean no I'm not uh, this is going wrong this is really going wrong seriously this is really going wrong okay let's keep on track so um yeah so we have this um cool so this is text animation now the last thing I need to talk about is we have something here called path option uh, more options and this is where basically you can see this small um, cross here and that is in every single letter and character if you see well if you can you know you have a brain that you can think with right seeing they see not hearing they hear not neither do they understand uh, yes so yeah so that's group alignment more option group alignment that's what we call the anchor point for text animation now if I bring this guy uh, let's just say right on top so guess what so each letter will be scaled from there and will be rotated from there just like an anchor point you see that beautiful right you like it you like it uh, cool now the same thing I can bring this guy for example in the center and that's gonna be quite beautiful see so it just scales from the center which was beautiful so that's all when it comes to um, that's all you need to know about text animation for this tutorial um, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, the shape layer now as you can see here I have a kind of rounded shape some people they are asking how did I get that now that's very simple so for example let's just check this let's make a straight line all right and I'm just gonna make something like this now by default when you make your shape I'm just gonna call this line you make your shape um, I don't need fill okay cool when you make a stroke like this all right now the edges are you know straight they are not gay they are just straight okay cool so how can we get this end of shape rounded well that's very simple is if you go inside your stroke contents shape okay we don't need fill you have stroke here okay now let's open it so basically inside the stroke we have a lot of things I mean we have the color that we can change it even there uh, we have the opacity of the stroke and we have the stroke with you know basic stuff and then we have this um, line cap first we have bot cap all right which is straight and then we have ah uh, 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 all right I can see that smile right did you, you see he's smiling yeah uh, 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 uh. <laughs> all right it's like cool so um, um yeah I'm going to this yoga class so I can feel you guys now smiling so um, yeah so basically this is how it goes um butt cap round cap okay cool now um, the other thing that I actually I want to talk about is since we are in shape is an effect beautiful effect called three pad okay so basically three pad what it does is for example let me just close this and do a small revision like bum 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 like a zigzag kind of thing all right cool so if I want to get now this things rounded all I need to do is just go inside content shape stroke line cap round cap cool all right now if I want to animate this like you know it animates like a snake or something all I need to do is close all this go to content add three pads now we've seen this in previous tutorials but we're gonna say that again so inside trim pad we have start and we have end all right mostly we're gonna work with end so that's what it does yep you got it right so I'm just gonna put a keyframe on zero 
like the end, nothing has started. So one, two, let's just say 30 frames. Um, shift page down to go. Shift page down 10 frames, 10 frame, 30 frames. Okay, so you can see here 30 frames. So uh, I'm just gonna change this to 100. Okay, so if we play this, this is what we have. All right, and of course I can control the speed by putting F9. All right, easy ease. Then I can just make this from fast. Like it goes fast and then it slows at the end. So we're gonna have something like this. You know, it slows at the end. You see that? You see that? You like it? You like it? Ah. All right, cool. For example, two seconds so that you can really see it. See that? So it goes very fast at the beginning and then it slows at the end. Cool. All right, um, that's about train path. Um, actually, there is another way to do this, to have rounded cap, um, for example, but this is the, the stupidest way. So I'm gonna show you, I just showed you the fast way, the intelligent way, the, the way you are supposed to do, or if you feel like, you know, you wanna learn more stuff, let's see. So basically you have a shape layer, so um, yeah, before you start crying, um, there is an effect to, uh, you know, make things rounded and fix pixelized things. And that effect is called matte, matte choker. So if I put this guy and then let's just say, for example, six, so you can see that it starts getting rounded there. So the more I choke this, see, then it gets rounded. But the problem is, as you can see, is a bit blurry, but yeah. All right, cool, so that's what we do. Mostly we do, you use this for green screen and stuff and um, uh, yeah, when you get pixelized edges and you, like stair kind of pixel edges and you need to fix this, then you use Matt Choker. But yeah, it's not really a good idea since we are working with uh, shape. So you'd better just, as we said, you just go inside, content, shape, stroke, line cap, round cap. All right, cap is the end of something, so yeah. All right, cool. So um, yeah, that's when it comes to shape. Um, another thing I need to talk about is, um, y you know, sometimes you are making something beautiful, like let's just say. All right, some abstract art kind of thing. Like, let's even change the stroke, all right? And then you're making like, wow, you know, making beautiful things. Then, you know, you need to use this a lot. You know, you need to put it here, put it here, put it here, put it here, put it here. So in spite of, you know, duplicating and uh, putting this guy here, then duplicating, then uh, you need to push it up and then put this guy here and then you duplicate it again then you start already to forget which one is which one you put it here you know it's a lot of problems then you, if you need to scale you need to select them both and then you need to scale down so that's a lot of problems so in order to fix this um hold on am i recording actually oh yeah i'm recording so in order to fix this we know from previous tutorials and if you don't know there is a way to group some layers in order to group layers we are just going to go to select those layers and then we're going to go to composition uh, layer precompose or if you have the latest after effects from cs5 and up you can just right click and then you have precompose all right so that's going to create a new composition and the two layers inside it so i'm just going to call this amazing shape all right it's 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 amazing so yeah so if i go inside you see it opens a new hold on it opens a new composition as you can see it creates even a new composition and then puts the two layers there but what's the problem here that um i get as a question i mean especially in class is that it's too big. I mean, look, the shape is just here. But the composition is... If we go inside... The composition is 1280 by 720, and that's more bigger, you see. It's like a lot of empty spaces, and that's a lot to render, and yeah. You have to put in mind that the render really takes care of that. I mean, 
maybe it's nothing, but for After Effects, that's something. So your something is something for After Effects, and your nothing is something for After Effects. I guess you lost it there, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Now, what do we need to do is we just need to fix this. You know, we just want it to be that small so that when we go here, we can see that all these layer uh, dimension are, you know, exactly as that. So in order to do this, we're going to use a tool that I call, uh, not I call, that is called region of interest. And that tool is just right here. You know, it's just here. So basically what this does is you just show to After Effects uh, for example, you have a lot of layers going on, you're making an Iron Man or some stupid kind of videos or amazing videos, you know, you cooking noodles and, you know, you have a lot of VFX going on, you know, the pan is exploding, your mom is crying, uh, your sister is jumping off the wall and your brother is banging his girlfriend right in front of the door and cutting off her head or whatever shit that might happen so sometimes you just want to concentrate on a small scale because you don't want to render the whole thing you just want to render for example click on this you just want to see this part here so when you work after effect is just going to show you this part so you gain a lot of time while previewing you know maybe you just want to see this part maybe your brother is banging his girlfriend um, right here you know, because you move and stuff. All right, whatever, you get it. So, um, yeah, so that's how it works. Okay, this is region of interest. You just show what's your interest. What do you want your After Effects to preview? You know, he doesn't calculate these things. He just calculate this. Well, this doesn't solve anything. All right, now it, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to try to get the dimensions correct. For example, this one. All right, so the moment I finish putting my region of interest, I can just go to composition, crop comp to region of interest, which means cut my composition to only where the region of interest is. So the moment I click, da da, all right, that's it. The composition is exactly the same size as my region of interest. All right, so if I go back, da da, see that? Amazing, beautiful, cool. So now I can just duplicate this guy and yeah, which is better. You know, it doesn't cover the whole thing. And I have much control. Like if I go here, then bring this guy there. Yeah, that's quite beautiful now. I can just scale it the way I want it from there. And that's nice. All right, so that comes to um, region of interest. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is this beautiful script here, is and Wiz. And basically, you can get this script easily from AE Scripts. And um, why am I having a slow internet again? Oh, I'm downloading that HD porn. Sorry, guys, but it's been a long time I didn't watch porn. So, um, yeah. Is. Where is it? Is. And is and or is it isn't is it? It's for free, actually. Just so that you know, you just come here and you put zero or um, yeah, you just add to cart and then you download. You create an account and you download. Um, it's for free, and um, if you find it useful, as many other um, motion designers, please. Um, uh, you know, you can donate some number, whatever, whatever, whether it's one or what it's two, or you know, the guy is asking for fourteen or fifteen. So, yeah, that's not much. I mean, when you start making money, I mean, don't forget people that you know. Sometimes stay up late night just to get you that. So yeah, let's keep on going on. So the moment you install it, um, you need actually to install it on your, uh, I don't know, um, local disk, program files. And uh, I don't know, A2B, After Effects CC, supported file. Then you have this um, folder called scripts. Inside scripts, you have a folder called script UI panel, I mean, script with, you know, user interface. Script with user interface. So you go inside and you just paste your script here, is and whiz, and the things that you will get with your is and whiz. All right, this one and this one. Okay, then you restart your After Effect, 
when you restart it, you go to window, you go down, ease and wheeze. That's it. All right, for example, connect layers. It will open like this. Then you can just go take it from here and put it, for example, here or whatever you feel like. All right, good. Now, what is this ease and wheeze? Well, it's very simple. Um, for example, let's just get a shape. All right, let's just get a shape. Let's just get, um, uh, let's just get um, uh, uh, a circle. All right, the first thing is um, having a small problem with anchor point, so I'm just gonna use this script reposition anchor point that you can get actually from position anchor point. So you can get also from AE scripts. All right, so also it's for free if you want. Cool, so what it does is it just puts your anchor point where you tell him, you know, whether here, 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 or in the center. So I'm just gonna put it right in the center. That's all. All I need to do is select my layer and then reposition, that's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use um, uh, scale, simple scale from zero, then shift page down 10 frames, 10 frames. Remember, as I told you for a smooth animation, 20 frames is enough. It's really good, or 30 frame maximum. So 20 frames between 0 and 30. So yeah, never go over that or else it's going to get pretty lousy. So um, once again, 0, 10, 20 frames, and I'm going to put this back to 100. And if I go and preview this, this is what I have. It's pretty boring animation. Now, what I want to do is, for example, I want this to, um, you know, give it this kind of amazing bounce that you can see here. Um, check this out. Uh, all right, you see that bounce, you know, it overshoots on you. Like, it's quite beautiful. So how I did that is actually, I just went put from zero to 100. I selected my keyframes, I went to ease and wheeze, and I have a lot of presets, but the one that interests us is back and elastic. Now, let's check back. All right, so back and then by default, you will have in and out. All right, so let, let's, let's test this so that you can see. So all I need to do is select my keyframes, select the preset and press apply. And then I just need to go and play. All right. So that's the problem. Now, it's beautiful at the end, but we have a problem at the beginning, all right? So basically what this script does is it bounces this um, two keyframes at the beginning and at the end. Now I just want it, for example, in the beginning, let's just say, and then apply. Now check this out. It bounces it back in the beginning, then show it at the end. All right, if that's what you want, uh, good luck. For my case, I just want it at the end. All right, so if I play, check this out. Beautiful, so nothing, boom. All right, so it just kicks one time, come back. That's back, which is really beautiful. Cool, and for example, in my case, I always use elastic. Um, I just select all this elastic so that it gives me some quite a bit of overshoot as you can see here it bounces quite a bit dum, 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 dum. so if I make this shorter uh, longer can you see well yeah all right I have this small Small thing at the end, you know. Alright, this is quite cool. Alright, uh, it doesn't only apply actually to scale. You can also apply it to um, to uh, position. For example, I'm just going to put position here. Um, I'm going to put a keyframe, for example, here. I'm going to put a keyframe at... Uh, let's just say one, two, twenty 20 frames. I'm going to put a keyframe. I'm going to go in the beginning and I'm just going to drag this up. All right. Then I'm going to select both keyframes and um, I'm going to say, for example, back. I just want it at the end because I don't care about the beginning. 
Cool. Now, if I play, can you see that? Shoo. All right, just one time. All right, and it's linear. As you can see, it comes directly. All right, that's one. Now, if I go and put, for example, bounce out, check this out. So the ball bounces, which is quite cool. Maybe you want that. All right. Now, if we go to elastic, now check what's going to happen. Check what's going to happen. It's like, all right. So it. It like it doesn't go linear as you can see it doesn't really go linear it goes a bit to the right and then it comes back bouncing all right cool how far I am oh god 40 minutes already sorry guys this is being dragged but there is a lot yeah cool so this is in a wheeze um, if you understand this then that's pretty much it actually all right now Let's go fast and create um, and create what I created. So for that, I'm just going to use a reference because, yeah, I'm just going to use a reference. Uh, or I'm just going to scale this a bit. Okay, cool. Now, all right. Cool. So first thing is I need to create a text. So I'm just going to go grab my text and uh, Proxima Nova, I'm just gonna type my text and then I'm gonna take care of it later. So, new web flows for sending, for, for sending and receiving. All right. So, I'm just gonna put it here. Um, I'm just gonna hide this now. So I'm just gonna put this all capital and I'm just gonna scale this down a bit. All right, and change this to probably regular uh, semi bold. Yeah, that's pretty much, uh, nah, just put it back to bold. Now I'm just gonna get this guy, put it a bit on top. Why is my computer getting slow? Oh yeah, I'm rendering that thing, okay. Cool, and I'm gonna put the anchor body to the center, all right. And I'm just gonna scale this guys down a bit. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, 50 sounds like nice. All right, cool. Now, why is this being? Okay. Now, um, this is um, the text, which is cool. All right. Now, what I need to do is I need to animate the text. So for this, I'm just gonna use, as I said, animation preset. Oh, I should. Okay, I don't need it to be 3D so that I can go fast. Now this is what's going on. So it starts jumping. All right, that's not what I want. Okay, that's not what I want. I want to create something like this. You know, it just scales. It doesn't rotate. It just scales, bombs, boom. All right, so that's what I want. So I'm just going to go and yeah. First, I need to change the anchor point. Oh, God. So um, I just need to go inside here. Uh, first, I don't need the color. Uh, so I'm just gonna go inside text, take off the last one and take off the second one because I just need the intro. Now what's going on is I just need to check off this one. All right, cool. All right, so if you like it, good. In my case, all I need to do is go inside my path option, uh, uh, more option and then go group alignment and align this right in the center. So I'm just gonna write, align this right in the center. So I'm just gonna guess somewhere around 43, I guess 40, yeah, cool. Now what's gonna happen is, all right, cool. Now the only problem is I'm just gonna go to animation. I don't need the position and I don't need the rotation. I just need the scale from zero to 100%. So yeah, as you can see, all right. That's it. So now I have my text flowing. All right, so let's play this. Come on, fast computer. You can do this, you can do this. Yeah, all right, cool. Now let's create, um, let's create this arrow. All right, so to create this arrow, I'm just gonna go to my arrow and um, I don't really need fill, I just need a stroke. 
okay because we need rounded cap so I'm just gonna go and maybe get the color here okay cool and I need a stroke for like five now that I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna change the color so that I can see mine so I'm just gonna put a um, key there I'm just gonna put another key there and I'm gonna drag this all right like that and I'm just gonna drag this here okay then I'm gonna make the stroke a bit bigger until I satisfy myself okay so maybe I'm just gonna yeah. okay so I'm just gonna drag this there somewhere cool all right so I'm just gonna say 11 yeah 11 sounds cool now I'm just gonna say body arrow and um, yeah, I'm gonna change the color to the color. Cool. Now, what I need to do is um, I need to round cap this thing, but first, this anchor point is disturbing me, so I'm just gonna put it in the center there. Cool. Now, I need to round. I need to round this cap. So, to do this, I'm just gonna go inside my body arrow, content, shape, stroke, and as you could see, line cap, it's bot cap. So, I'm just gonna change it to round cap, and that's it. Cool. And in order to animate this, um, it's actually very simple. All I need to do is um, trim pad this. All right. So I'm just going to close everything. And uh, I'm going to take care of the position of the layer in time later. So yeah, or you can do that because I'm just trying to explain things here, not show you things. So yeah, content, I'm going to click content trim path and I'm just gonna go to trim path and I'm gonna put it as you can see if we animate this all right so put zero then after maybe uh, let's just say 10 frames uh, I'm gonna have this all right and of course I'm just gonna go and easy ease this maybe yeah Maybe I'm just gonna use it, or probably not, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, cool. So what I have now is uh, very simple. All right. Cool. All right. Now, oh yeah, it's actually full auto. Oh my god, what a dumb I am. All right, cool, buddy. Now the last thing I need to add is um, that arrow here. So to do this, I'm just gonna create a new shape layer, and uh, I'm just gonna put since I want this to 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 move like this. So I need to shape one from here to here, and then another shape from here to here. So I'm just gonna click, pop. All right, change the color so that we know. All right, and of course, I'm just gonna go inside, content, shape, stroke, line cap, round cap. Okay, and I'm gonna try to fix this. Uh, I'm gonna try to fix this. Cool. Now, all I need to do is duplicate this guy and just move this one to the other side cool now all I need to do is go inside frame bat and do the same thing uh, you see yeah so I'm just gonna put a keyframe then after 10 frames excellent. and of course should be a F9 I cannot press F9 so keyframe easy ease and that's what it does so it just makes it fast and then slow slow fast and then back to slow so it was quite smooth animation now all I need to do is change this back to its original color and that's it all right I'm just gonna for example wait until this time so All right, so by the time it finishes, this thing is there. All right, so I'm just gonna slow this down a bit. Cool, 
So this is what I have. All right. So yeah, as I said, I'm just going to call this head arrow. Now, the problem is I need, for example, this to duplicate it and put it here. So in spite of duplicating the whole thing and then flipping and blah, 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 I could just take both of them, right click, pre-compose, I'm going to call this arrow. And then I'm going to bring it here. Now, now you understand why first I needed to explain things before I start the design. So now this composition is bigger than, uh, all right, I'm missing <laughs> Uh, delete cool now now you can see that you know the arrow is you know composition is way too big you know so if I try to scale look what's gonna happen it's gonna go back to the anchor point here and that's not really what I want I want things to be exactly like the arrow so yeah inside composition I'm gonna use region of interest I'm just gonna draw that region of interest here and then I can fix it actually right exactly there if I feel like I want to be a perfect guy. You know. And I need to get married. Okay, cool. Then I'm just going to go composition, crop to comp interest, and then that's it. Now all I need to do is go and fix this guy here, for example. Yeah. Now if I want to put it the other side, um, I could easily. Um, I could easily just duplicate this guy, so Control D or Edit, um, duplicate, and I need to flip it the other side. So to flip something to the other side, you go inside Scale, you unlink this guy because if you change something, both of them will change. So unlink to the first value, you put it negative, and then you scale. All right, so. Cool. Now all I need to do is bring this guy to the other side. So and just offset this a bit. So this guy appears, then the other guy appears. Cool. All right. All right. Now this is when it comes to the arrows. Now, the next thing that we need to do is the website. So the website, actually, it's somehow the same thing. So in order for me to do it, I'm just going to wait until the last point. And I'm just going to go and check this rounded rectangle. And I don't need, actually, I just need shape. So I'm just going to go and create my rounded rectangle like this, for example. All right. Cool. Um, you see the anchor point, I have a problem, so I'm just going to put it right in the center. <laughs> cool. So I'm just going to call this body website. All right. I'm just going to call this browser, probably. Yeah. All right. Um, I need to fix the rounded there, so I'm just going to go inside, rectangle, uh, rounded, and so I'm just going to put it small. All right. Cool. All right. Yep. All right. Now, you see, as you can see in the picture, um, there is a lot of things being animated with the browser. All right. So it's going to be a big mess to have the whole things browser here outside. So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to pre-compose this, and we animate everything. Then we're going to bring it here. Cool. Cool. So I'm um, just going to show this guy. All right. And browser. Pre-compose, I'm gonna call website animation one. Okay, so as I said, the same thing, it's bigger than the website himself, so I'm just gonna go inside and do something like this. All right, pretty much exactly. Yeah, trying to get exact as much as possible. Then composition, crop to comp, region interest. So back here again, so I'm just gonna put this guy here. All right, in the center. Yep, cool. Just right there. All right. Now the problem is here, is that you need to understand. You see, some people will try to be intelligent, and I don't blame them. I mean, it's it's a way of doing it, you know. It's a way of doing it, which is what they're going to do actually is that they're going to bring animate the position of the website from here to here. 
all right for example for example let me show you an example they basically gonna do a keyframe from here that's the wrong way actually uh, and then bring it there cool and then they'll bring it here okay then I bring it there so what do we have we have this guy going there all right and then they will say oh we can also move the scale all right so you and then shift scale cool I'm gonna go at the last I'm gonna put a keyframe then I'm gonna go back and then put this guy back to zero so what do I have I have something like this amazing it's like no 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 you teach us today how to do ease and ways please use it okay no problem I'm gonna use it so I'm just gonna go elastic out put a keyframe so um, how many I have here one two actually better it's better if I do two uh, hold on. just put this guy here then one two yeah nearly cool all right and uh, elastic out cool now let's check do we have the same thing somehow all right Move up, move up. I know it's hot in my leg, but yeah, move up. I'm recording this tutorial. Cool. Alright, so that's a way, but you know, that's a lot of keyframes going on, and that's a problem. Alright, and as you can see, yeah, it's a big problem. I mean, it takes a lot of time. So basically, what you can do is if you understand anchor points, oh my god, this is nearly an hour. If you um, understand anchor point then that's very easy you only need two keyframes for that you don't need to care about position so let's get all this back together okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring anchor point uh, I'm gonna bring scale all right I don't need position I'm just gonna bring scale and in spite of putting the anchor point here I'm gonna check and put the anchor point Hold on. I'm gonna put the anchor point here this is the anchor point tool or you just hit Y Okay, why? And you just put the anchor point shift, you just put it here. Now, if I scale this, see that? It scales from that anchor point. All right, so all I need to do is put a keyframe on zero, put a keyframe, then one, two, 20 frames, and bring it back to 100. And that's it. All right. For example okay cool and the last thing you need to do is go elastic apply and um, you're good to go actually yeah. so let's see all right cool yep so the same thing goes for the other one is that I can just uh, I can just, for example, uh, duplicate um, duplicate this one. Maybe I want to have other um, things, so I could just duplicate this guy and uh, bring it here. All right, I'm just gonna bring this guy here. Cool. And the anchor point. I'm just gonna change it to uh, this part. And same thing. I'm just gonna put a scale. Then one, two. I'm just gonna be scale back to zero. Nine. But then I'm just gonna offset a bit. Yeah. Both of them. Elastic. Apply. Now, if I play this, this is what I'm gonna have. All right. Cool. Now all I need to go is just go inside and try to put the content. For example, I need a bar, so I'm just gonna go around it. Um, I'm gonna put, um, oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna, oh my god, my, all right. Around it, I'm gonna make this white, or uh, less white, F -A -F -A -F -A. and I'm just gonna make the URL, for example. I'm just gonna make the URL here. Uh, you see, I have an anchor point problem, so I'm just gonna put the URL there. All right, cool. All I need to do now, I'm just gonna call this URL. Maybe the URL, I'm just gonna scale it up, so I'm just gonna put a keyframe on zero. And one, two, I'm gonna say 100. And then I'm just gonna tap, 
and maybe it's part of elastic I'm gonna say back it's gonna play okay I'm just gonna offset this all right back is too big actually It's too big, it's too big. I'm just gonna use, for example, elastic apply. Yeah, it's way better actually. Okay, cool. Um, if, for example, I need to create, um, how do you call that? Um, a page, a web page. So I'm just gonna go and do the same thing. I'm gonna create, for example, a web page right here. Uh, I'm gonna create a web page right. Uh, sorry, guys. All right. So I'm just going to control this like that. I could. It's completely messed up. All right. Oh. Sorry, mosquitoes. So I'm just going to put this guy like that. Maybe. Yeah. And I'm going to take off the roundness a bit to something like that. All right. Cool. So this one um, probably comes with it. So I'm gonna have something like, all right. And I'm just gonna go, all right. I'm gonna call this page blank. Um, if I need to animate something else, that's gonna be very easy. For example, for example, let's just add a few elements. I don't wanna drag this tutorial more longer. It's already one hour. So I'm just gonna go and um, I'm gonna create, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna create something like this. Let's just say, for example, a, uh, a button. So I'm just gonna go create a button like this and change the anchor point there. All right. I'm just gonna say that this is a bit gray, just like a bit gray, like a button here. Cool, let's just say, big button that's going on here maybe the user needs to click it so I'm just gonna call this approve button all right always name your layers that's a very important thing um, I'm gonna change the anchor point there and same thing I'm just gonna put a keyframe at zero put a keyframe then one two I'm gonna say hundred all right so the same thing bum easy and wheeze elastic apply then put this a bit later. So I'm gonna have like, all right, things going on. All right, a lot of things animated. Uh, probably I need to add, for example, uh, forms, uh, like text or something. So I can just go, I don't need the fill. I just need, uh, for example, stroke. I'll just, you know, repeat what we've done, like uh, recapitulation or something. I don't know how are you gonna call this. I don't want this surrounded, I'm gonna call this. Uh, menu item and I'm just gonna go inside content shape I don't need fill stroke line round cap right so that's one okay um actually it's quite big so I'm just gonna say like five all right uh, even four actually okay all right the anchor point is a problem so I'm just gonna put it like uh, in the center I don't care. I'm just right in the center. Cool. Uh, all right. Um, the last thing I need to do is um, uh, trim pad this. So I'm just going to go in the beginning, add trim pad inside trim pad. I'm going to put zero. Uh, zero. I'm just going to put zero. All right. One, two, three, maybe. And like that, you know, I can just go and easy ease and make this from fast to slow so it goes faster than slow at the end. All right, cool. And I'm gonna slow this a bit, close that. All right, so I'm just gonna slow this a bit. So, what's going on is, all right, maybe I can duplicate this guy, move it a bit down. All right, and change the color to something a bit lighter, like that. And uh, maybe I need it to be a bit smaller. 
Okay, maybe I need this guy to be smaller like this. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put this guy like that. So. Alright. Alright. Cool. So I mean, this is how thing goes. Um, when you go back here, so this is what you have. All right. So the more elements you put, the better. Actually, website two has to come behind this guy. So the same thing, you need to go to inside website two and then fill it up. All right, cool. Um, yeah, the last thing I did was, of course, that small round thing. In order to do that, I just went inside ellipse um, um, let's just say white or something like this and then I went to this uh, actually this one yeah. yep so um, I just went and I created a circle Alright, the circle was a bit bigger than this. I believe it was 9 or 8, 8 actually. And um, I need to pay attention to the anchor point. I'm just going to put it right in the center. Alright, so I'm just going to call this icon. And all I need to do is um, scale, put a keyframe on 0, then 1 and 2, maybe 30 frame. I'm going to put this back to um, 100. Alright, so I'm going 30 frames, so check it out, use the elastic, out, so just close all this, maybe a bit at the end, alright, now what's going on, alright, so that you can see, alright, now let's see all this beauty, cool, yeah, so this is how you animate your stuff, you know, isn't with elastic and things, um, last thing um, also what I did was I created a small um, I created a small zigzag so I don't want to create it again so I'm just gonna go and, uh, and copy it so yeah that's what I created so I'm just gonna go and place it here all right I'm just gonna delete everything that is there so that we can do it together all right so this is all to it I've got a zigzag yeah I'm gonna change that good point there Right. I'm not gonna animate the scale on the zigzag again, so all I need to do is um, I can put it here. I'm just gonna parent the zigzag to icon so so that they can scale together. Alright? Cool. Now the only thing I'm gonna do to zigzag is go inside and trim path it, and that's all. So trim path and um, yeah, go inside, uh, go in the beginning, I'm gonna put keyframe on zero then after one two three maybe 40 because it has to be a bit longer so I yeah. cool I can just maybe easy ease maybe I guess yeah everything easy ease which looks better so that's the thing it's beautiful that's how it goes let's see all right. Cool. Um, last thing I did add was um, the small, um, as you can see, uh, this one, the the lock. So how I did the lock was pretty tricky. Let's let's see it. Uh, so as you can see. All right. It was pretty tricky, so let's 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 make that. So what I did first was I created a rounded rectangle. I don't need fill, I just need stroke. Alright, so what I did was for example I'm gonna create a rounded like that. Uh, let's just say like that. Just for example. And the roundiness, just quit that a bit. Let's just say around six. Yeah, that looks like fine. And um, I'm just gonna call this lock stroke body all right pay attention all right uh, and then the same thing I'm gonna select the same layer huh? 
not change anything. I'm gonna click stroke. I'm gonna make a stroke like that, maybe. Then I'm gonna make a stroke that ends here. All right, for example. All right. Okay, and um, yeah. I'm just gonna push it a bit. Same thing, and just stroke. Yep, and last thing is I'm just gonna go and create the last part, which is the okay, and the last part. For example, uh, actually the stroke is a bit too much for the last two shapes. So I'm just gonna something like that. All right, so I go. So pretty much. All right, so log stroke so what I'm going to do to this one is I'm gonna first scale it okay now pay attention this is the trick to it I'm gonna start from zero okay put a keyframe one for example uh, let's just say one uh, I don't know two all right 20 frames 20 frames and I'm gonna say Okay, so what do I have? Small. Okay, I'm gonna add a small thing as always. Elastic apply. So what do I have? Okay, so it bounces. Cool. Right now, the second beautiful thing that I added was I basically added a rotation. Okay, so I put a keyframe here. Now, what I've done was hold on what I've done was I went and I changed the whole thing here the anchor point here and then check what's gonna happen all right let's just say minus 90 degree minus 90 degree so you can see what's going on all right well this one is 90 degree uh, this one is zero cool so this is what's going on so it goes rotates and goes there cool so all I need to do is maybe uh, ease ease and I'm not really sure but um, let's just try let's make that fast cool so let's see that All right, so that's how it was done. Now let's see it with the animation a bit later. All right, so kind of like that. All right, so kind of. All right, so um, yeah, that's pretty much it um, now for the inside it was pretty much somehow the same it's just that in spite of stroke in spite of stroke I had to make a body and to do that I just went and I created a body like this and I went to inside a rectangle and, stroke, and made the rotation a bit like that and yeah all I needed to do is um, scale this so from 0 back to 1 to 100 and that's it so I'm just gonna close the layer here okay cool so what basically I have is like this now I'm having a small problem as you can see you see the anchor points I'm just gonna go to the last point where it's not scaling anymore and make it at the center so this way I have it this way but the problem is I need to come with a body lock white I needed to come with the lock so that's a problem so I need to rotate it as well what else a problem so what I need to do 
all I actually need to do is just rotate it with the log. So what's going to happen? Is it's going to come back with the log, and it's pretty beautiful. So scale, elastic, apply. Thank you very much. All right. So everything up is so fast, it's so beautiful. All right. Now, same thing goes for that top part, but I don't want to spend time on that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take care of the key. Now, the key part, um, actually, you can do all this in Illustrator, but I'm not really... I like to put all my shapes inside of After Effects in spite of going to Illustrator and then bring it into After Effects. So um, the last thing you want to do is let's make the key. All right. Um, so to make the key, I actually made it quite nicely. All I had to do is go first to an ellipse tool and get this, for example, color. So, yeah. I'm holding Control and Shift so that I can get it straight. All right, cool. Um, I just need to put that in the center. Okay, cool. And the last one is in the same shape. I just went and I created a shape like that. All right. I'm just gonna go straight actually if I want. No need. I can just go straight. All right. Uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna close it here. So now this is how it's gonna look like. All right, cool. So that's one. I'm gonna call this key black. And to get this one, it's easy. I'm gonna do somehow the same thing. I just in spite of that I need to get this color so from the center drag and control shift yep that's for the for the key all right now the last part is I need to get that thing so this one might be a bit uh, stupid to do it inside of after effect so I'm gonna first do it this way well I'm gonna do it uh, Close that. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. Uh. All right. Cool. So I'm just gonna call this orange key. All right. Now, what I need to do is I need to create this small hole and this small thing inside of the orange key. Now, to do this is, um, sadly, a lot of people they don't know about this, but you can actually mask a shape. Now, what's the problem here? Let's see. All right, it's cool. But the thing is, we need a hole. Now, if I try to create a hole inside this orange key, Basically, I'm creating a shape, so that's a problem. I don't want to create a shape, I want to create a mask. Now, for you to create a mask inside a shape, you have to pay attention to these two things here. All right? To create shape, to create mask. But when you have a normal layer, not a shape, you don't have that. It's grayed out because you just create a mask. But when you have a shape, After Effect is wondering whether you want to create a shape or whether you want to create a mask. So in our situation, we want to create a mask. So I'm just going to go and create a mask. Uh, I'm actually on the key. All right. For example. Uh, well, create mask. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go there and yeah, create a mask. All right. Then in spite of add, I can say subtract. Ta da Alright, cool. Now, same thing goes for this thing. I can just go and grab a uh, rectangle tool and draw a uh, mask, switch to mask, and just draw your mask there. Okay, but at this moment you want to subtract. There we go, you got your key. So you can save 
and all you need to do right now is animate this. So I'm going to start with uh, this one. So scale, put a keyframe on zero. And after one, two, you can say 100. Hey! What day? All right, so I can just go and say elastic again. So what do I have now? All right, cool. Last thing, I can make it even better by going to rotation, put a keyframe, and at this moment I can uh, maybe 20, yeah. Just put it there, so it's just gonna be like that. Cool, so I can just drag this, easy ease, and um, yeah, drag it this way. So what do I have now? All right. Put on your point is there? Okay, cool. All right, great. Now same thing goes for this guy, but a bit offset. So I'm just gonna start from this point. I'm gonna say scale to zero. Then shift page down, page down. Hundred. Go to elastic. Last thing, shift rotation to bring the rotation at the same point here. And here I'm going to say 20. All right. Okay, easy ease. And this one. All right, cool. Now let's see how it goes for both of them. Alright, it's quite too slow. Alright, All right, cool, we got it. Now all I need to do is um, wait until the lock is appearing and then I can bring them both when the lock appears, actually. So when the lock is appearing, yeah, this thing is being shown up. So Let's see now the final result. Yeah, so pretty much that's it. That's the whole techniques in this. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, if you guys have any other question, that would be really nice. Um, yeah, just keep practicing, guys. Remember that. Just keep practicing. Um, I noticed you guys when you go and watch, for example, Vimeo or Behance, um, um, you sometimes see some really great videos and um, yeah you start feeling bad about yourself that you can't create the same thing maybe though you know the techniques but you don't know how to create well I would say that that's wrong um, if you don't have the idea yet if you don't have a creative idea you can just try recreating other videos so that you can start keep practicing you know just keep practicing even though you don't have an idea just keep practicing so that the moment you get an idea you know, a concept that you want to make for a video or you get a client work, you can, you know, you'll be fast and you'll be, you'll be nice. I mean, you would have learned a lot already. You'll be prepared for that. You know, you'll be warmed up. Not suddenly a client comes and then you have to open up your After Effects and dust it out and then kick all the spiders and lizard and whatever. Yeah, so um, this is all for it. The next tutorial is going to come up really soon as well. It's going to be on the same um, the same way. If you guys have any requests, um, just let me know anyways, you know, on message or comment or something. Um, yes, um, not to drag this. There is a bonus video right after this. Um, yeah, my name is Mr. Popo and I'll see you next time.
gonna be the biggest morning and afternoon video ever. <laughs> That was wrong. <laughs> 